Hi, in this video we're going to show you an app you could use to find duplicate files on your computer. So we've been testing out some of these apps that are online that are available and some of them work better than others and this one works pretty well. So we're going to show you how it works. So it's called All Dupe. So you can just download it and install it. And I believe they even have a portable version if you don't want to install it. But we did the installation version here. So we'll just open it up. Okay, so it has this quick start guide here that kind of floats around that you could go through and just kind of do a quick uh, selection of your folders that you want to scan. So we're just going to do the old fashioned way here. Okay, select folders. So you could add a folder if you want to browse for it here. Add a folder by text input, paste folders from clipboard, missing drive letters, special folders, and so on. Okay, so we're going to add a folder here. We're going to do the documents folder for this user. Then we're going to add another folder here. But this time we're just going to add the whole E drive. So we're going to compare the documents folder with the E drive. And then on this E drive, we have a couple folders, miscellaneous and a folder called old PC backup. Then you have your comparison methods down here. So the default is to compare files from all source folders, uh, but you could choose one of these. Then you have some options here for don't search folders that point to the contents of another folder and so on. All right, then we have our search method. So we're going to be doing it by file name. You could do extension size, content, and so on. Then you have a drop down here. If you want to find similar file names, similar pictures and audio and so on. And then under file name, you have some options here. So the default is compare all characters of a file name, but you could kind of fine tune that with some of these settings here. And then you have some ignore options if you want to set those up. All right, and then we have the search options. So by the way, I'm just going to go over, you know, some of these options here because there's a lot to it. So you could check out the rest on your own if you want to get into some more detail here. Okay, so before the search starts, you have a couple options. During the search process, you have some options. All these are going to be unchecked by default and then what to do after the search is complete. Then you could search within archive files if you want, database files. Uh, you could do file filters if you want to include or exclude certain file types. You could use a folder filter for inclusive and exclusive results. Then you have some options here for ignoring wildcards, don't exclude subfolders, and so on. Then you have a file preview option. And you have another button here with some general options. You have the log information for the last search, uh, language options, help options, and of course donate if you like it. Okay, so we're going to click on start search. Okay, so when it does the search here, it kind of groups everything here and you could expand it and you could also go up here expand only groups with the selected files, expand all groups, and so on. So if we do that, it expands everything. And then there's a preview pane. So depending on what type of file um, it is, it may or may not show a preview. Then we also have some other options here that pop up after your search, such as show next expanded group, show next non-selected file, previous non-selected file, process mode, select all files, deselect, Select all files in the following folder, invert the file selection. Then there's some plugins here if you want to see what that does. This might not do anything because this is an older program here. Then you have some group options here for filtering. Some optimization here for columns. Close the search result, more help. Save the search results, your log. And there's the file preview if you want to turn that off. Okay, and then across the top here, we have search results. So process the selected files, what columns you want to see, filters, groups, process mode, select all files, deselect. You can remove groups with certain attributes, file protection, toolbar, and so on. Okay, so now let's say we wanted to do some cleanup here. It's kind of a manual process. So let's say we want to get rid of this one this one even found some stuff in the recycle bin there. 
and this one and this one. So once you have them selected, you have this button here, process selected files. So what groups should be processed? All groups by default, unless you have the filter configured, the action to be performed, uh, delete files. You could even do a secure delete or move them to the recycle bin or copy them to a folder, move them to a folder, even rename them. And then if you want to set up your backup folder, you could do this so that we'll have a backup of these removed files in case you want to get them back later. And then you have some options down here as well, such as remove all process files from the search results so they don't show up any longer. And then don't log any files if you want to complete it even quicker. And what to do after the action is completed, like that. Okay, we're going to click on OK. It gives you a little warning about deleting files, so we'll say yes. Okay, then it shows you this log here. So files detected, five of them. Files removed from the search result, five after deleting the files. Then you could close it. And if you click on log, you could read the log file there. It's kind of hard to read with the being kind of scrunched up there. Kind of the same information we saw in that file. All right, so that's just your basic overview of all dupe. You know, like I said, there's a lot more to it than what I showed you, but if you want to just go through these options and configure your custom scans and custom actions, it's a pretty nice program. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you could download all dupe and then you could try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Mm -hmm.